Well, let's talk now to Zhang Shishi, who's from the Department of Computer Science at Binghamton University in New York State. Uh, welcome to the program. Good to see you. So we heard a little bit in our report there about how uh, these robot dogs work, but how can they really uh, recognize things like traffic lights, for example, uh, and stop their owners uh, walking into a busy road? Um, so uh, recognizing the objects, uh, including traffic light signals, it's uh, generally called like a object recognition problem uh, within the computer vision uh, context. So uh, this is a sub-area of artificial intelligence where AIs and robotics are doing pretty well. And AIs are using uh, something called deep neural networks and particularly uh, called uh, convolutional neural networks to recognize objects and understanding the environment. And under some conditions, AI and robots can, can do better than even naive uh, people. Um, but within this uh, robotic guide dog context, uh, robots actually need more than uh, object recognition to understand the road is uh, safe or not uh, for navigation and other activities. So uh, this is an exciting area, and still a lot of research is needed. So it sounds like there's a little bit more work to be done, but I mean, can they really uh, match up to uh, regular guide dogs? What's the differences between them? Um, so uh, traditional guide dogs uh, has a long history, more than maybe 100 years, and uh, there's evidence that uh, they are very useful for having helping people navigate safely and efficiently in everyday environment and improve their independence and uh, safety. Um, but training real guide dogs is uh, costly and time consuming. Uh, after like uh, more than $100,000 of uh, training cost, still only maybe half of the dogs can graduate. Um, so uh, for robots, and we see a lot of uh, advances, say locomotion, uh, uh, quadruped that can safely navigate everyday environment and perception, the robot can understand the, the everyday environment. And also the hardware cost is uh, reduced a lot in the past five to 10 years. So robotics researchers are thinking about uh, using robotic guide dogs as the alternative of the uh, traditional guide dogs. And uh, they can visually perceive the environment, they can safely navigate the environment, um, but still a lot of work needs to be done. So what about the people uh, using guide dogs? How difficult is it uh, for a blind person to get used to working uh, with a robot like this? Um, this, is a, this is a very open question because uh, we don't have a, like a long history of research on robotic guide dogs. Um, but we can talk a bit about traditional guide dogs. Uh, after the guide dogs uh, graduate from training center, it takes about two weeks uh, for the human user, visually impaired people, uh, to work with the guide dogs uh, as a co-training process before the visually impaired person can independently use a guide dog. So as a robotics researcher, we hope to reduce this two weeks of training time uh, to maybe a couple of days uh, because robots can actively adapt to human preferences and human walking styles. So this is a new topic, this is a new area. Uh, we are pretty uh, hopeful about uh, shortening this time to maybe a couple of days. Zhang Shishi from Binghamton University, thank you very much for joining us on the program today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.